Hey, it's your local fish keeper Sabrina. How are you? I hope you are well. In today's video, we are going to dive into the world of dragons, specifically speaking, dragon puffers. Dragon pufferfish are also commonly known as humpback pufferfish or red-eyed dragon pufferfish. The scientific name for a dragon pufferfish is Pau palimbangensis. Dragon puffers originate from Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, and Laos. In the wild, they tend to mimic or camouflage as fallen leaves and rocks in the water. Dragon puffers are one of the many ambush puffer species. They will wait for a prey to swim by and then ambush or attack its prey. To an untrained eye, dragon puffers are often confused with its cousin, the Pau Suvati. However, dragon puffers have big red eyes, a humpback, and gorgeous butt like patterns on their body. In the aquarium, their life expectancy is about 10 to 15 years. To the common hobbyist, dragon puffers are not sexually dimorphic. However, I have spoken to a few dragon puffer breeders and they are able to distinguish a female from a male. Only sexually mature adults are sexually dimorphic. I do not feel like it is my place to share this knowledge in figure of giving out bad or wrong information. So if you do know a fellow breeder, do ask them instead. Ammonia and nitrites levels should always remain zero, with nitrates at less than 15 parts per million. pH levels should be between 6.5 to 7.5. I keep tomato at a pH level of 7. GH should be between 5 to 12. Dragon puffers originate from a tropical climate and thus should be kept at 24 to 28 degrees Celsius or 75.2 to 82.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Cooler temperatures will make them more susceptible to diseases, so if you live in a cold climbing area, definitely get a heater for them. A single dragon pufferfish should be kept in a minimum tank size of 30 gallons or 112 liters. Long tanks with a larger footprint is much more preferable over tall tanks. A tight-fitting lid is required as they tend to jump when scared or excited. Dragon puffers are one of the few puffer species that can be housed together with its own species. However, caution should always be practiced. If you do wish to house more than one dragon pufferfish in a tank, you will need to provide them with a much bigger tank space with plenty of heights. A pair of dragon puffers can be kept in a 200 liters or 53 gallon aquarium, and a trio can be kept in a 250 liter or 66 gallon aquarium. The more the puffer, the bigger the space. Firstly, lighting. Dragon puffers appreciate low to medium lighting. If you do have very bright lights, ensure to diffuse it with floating plants or with plenty of heights and structures. In general, 8 hours of light time is the maximum light time. It's important to regulate their scattering rhythm. Dragon pufferfish come from slow moving waters, so they do not appreciate fast flowing waters. While appropriate filtration size and system is required, ensure that the flow is not too overpowering. If you find that the flow of your filter is not able to provide sufficient oxygenation in your aquarium, I highly recommend adding an air stone to your tank. They are intolerant of low oxygenated water and poor water parameters. As for substrate, sand substrate is hands down the best substrate to be used for these puppies. They spend most of their time at the bottom of the tank and they love to wallow in sand. Every dragon puffer tank should contain some form of hide, be it a pot, a cave, driftwood, or plants. A common question that we get is if it's okay to keep plants with these puffers. Pufferfish are notorious for tearing plants and destroying plants in general. 
For me personally, I love planted tanks and it is actually possible to keep plants in your pufferfish tank, but everything boils down to the type of plant used. With Tomato, she doesn't really tear her plants but she loves sitting on them, and this squishes the plants most of the time. So I personally do not recommend soft high-tech stem plants. The plants in Tomato's tank do not look good at the moment because 1. She was sitting on them and 2. Tomato's lights actually stopped working and I only caught to it recently. Dragon puffers need to be fed a varied diet. They are piscivores, meaning they eat fish in the wild, but they also feed on small crustaceans, insects, and worms. In their home aquarium, their diet should contain more insects and worms compared to fish. The recommended diet include gut-loaded earthworms, crickets, dubia roaches, and frozen thought tilapia, or other non-thiaminase-containing fish. As with other puffers, they do not take pellets readily. Contrary to popular beliefs, dragon puffers should not be fed mollusks like clams, mussels, cockles, and oysters. Their teeth do not grow as fast as compared to other pufferfish species, which is why you rarely hear about overgrown teeth issues in this particular species. For smaller sized puffers, I do feed them once daily, but for adults, I recommend feeding them every other day. Feed your puffers until their belly is slightly round. As for live food, ghost shrimps can be fed as snacks for enrichment purposes, but should always be fed sparingly due to its thiaminase content. I am not fond of and do not recommend live feeder fish, but if you still want to feed them, live guppies is an option. However, still, I do not recommend store-bought feeder fish as they do tend to carry tons of diseases which will affect your puffer's health. A clean and healthy self-setup breeder tank for live feeders is highly recommended. Lurkers or ambush predators are pretty picky eaters in general and it can be quite frustrating for us keepers. If you do wish to learn more about how to get a picky puffer fish to eat, do comment down below and I will make a separate video dedicating to the topic. As I've mentioned earlier, dragon puffers are piscivores. No matter how big or small the fish is, dragon puffers will gladly eat and take a chunk out of the fish. So, no tank mates except for its own species is suitable for this species. Dragon puffers are ambush predators, so they are not the most active of fish. If you prefer active swimming fish, dragon puffers are definitely not for you. They are crepuscular species, making them more active at dawn and dusk. In my experience, younger dragon puffers are much more active compared to adults. Dragon puffers, like most lurker species, can be quite shy, especially new ones who have not yet been acquainted with you or yet to acclimate to the tank. Spend time in front of their tank and let them observe you instead of the other way around. Eventually, they will start to recognize their owners, especially the one feeding them. Dragon puffers are great camouflage artists. They do change colors from dark to light brown and sometimes even yellowish in color to blend in with their surroundings. They love to blend in with leaf litters, driftwoods, and rocks. Similar to other pufferfish species, they do change colors according to their mood as well as when they are ill. We've added this section in our care guide to answer your frequently asked questions. Can I touch my pufferfish? Technically, yes, but no. Pufferfish is a scaleless fish and has a slime coat that should not be disturbed. The function of the slime coat of a fish is that it acts as a shield to protect the fish from parasites, bacteria, and other harmful things that can make the fish sick. 
when we touch our puppies, the slime coat can get disturbed and irritated, thus exposing them to these unwanted and harmful diseases. Will puffers kill me with their poison? Puffers are poisonous and not venomous. This means that it can only kill you if you were to eat them. So please don't do that. Puffers are so cute when they puff up. Can I play with them by puffing them up? The answer is a straight no. Pufferfish puffs up as a defense mechanism. This is very stressful for the puffer. Any species of pufferfish should not be netted out or taken out of water. Pufferfish cannot expel air out, but they can expel water out on their own. Trapped air is very dangerous for them and prolonged trapped air will cause them to die. Avoid using nets when moving your puffers. Instead, use containers. Sometimes, your puffer will inflate in their tank for no apparent reason. In this case, don't worry, this is just them stretching. But if you do find your pufferfish puffing up ever so often though, do check for water parameter levels, any signs of illness, or if there are any triggers present as this is not normal. And that is all for today. If you have any further questions, feel free to comment down below. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Do like and subscribe if you would like to see more content. And especially, please comment down below as I love hearing your thoughts and reading your comments. Until then, see you next time!